Today, we're going to be talking about the sharing and collaboration features in Google Docs. My name is Rebecca Simons, and welcome to the Educate community. This is part one of our three-part series on Google Docs. Be sure to check out the description below for a time-stamped list of all the topics we'll be covering and the links to the other parts of this series. The power of Google Docs lies in its ability to foster collaboration. In today's world, being able to work effectively with one another is one of the skills our students will need to be successful in the 21st century. The first part of this video will focus on file sharing and features for monitoring access and or changes to your doc. The second part of the video will explore the features in docs that support and facilitate collaborative work. So let's get started with sharing features. Most of you are probably already familiar with how to share, but I want to go over a few settings you might not be as familiar with. When you click on the blue share button, you'll have the option to provide general access to your doc or to share with a specific individual or group. I want to take a short detour here and talk about a feature that's underutilized or one I at least forget about. If you find yourself sharing files with the same people routinely, you can expedite the process by creating a label and applying it to those contacts. Then when you go to share, all you have to do is type in the contact label and all the contacts with that label will be added. To add a label to your contacts, you'll go to contacts.google.com and click create label. For example, I might have a label for everyone who's on my grade level team. I can then click the edit icon for any contact, click manage labels, and select as many labels as I want to apply to my contact. All right, let's get back on track. Under user roles, you'll see the standard viewer, commenter, and editor roles. After granting editor access to someone, you have the option to transfer ownership of the doc to them. You also have the option to add an expiration date for any user level. This gives the individual access to the file for a certain period of time, then removes their access. Under the settings gear, you have the option to further customize how each role can interact with your doc. The first checkbox allows editors to make changes to the document, but it also gives them the ability to modify who the doc is shared with and to change user roles. The second checkbox gives viewers and commenters the option to download, print, and copy. Both of these are checked by default, so if you want to change these settings, you have to go in and manually modify them. In addition to sharing a file, you can publish it to the web. When you publish to the web, your content is visible to anyone and can be shared through a link or embedded. Now you might be thinking, isn't that the same as anyone with a link can view? Well, here's the main difference between the two options. When you share a doc as anyone with a link can view, the viewer will open the content in Google Docs. When you publish to the web, the content opens as a web page without the docs menu, and it also appears in a pageless format. In addition to sharing and publishing to the web, docs provides you with a variety of download options, including PDF and Word, so you can share your file in whatever format you need to collaborate. Another option for sharing is known as force copy. I will never forget the first time I opened a Google Doc and saw this screen. I immediately began a frantic Google search to discover how I could replicate this magic. When you share a force copy link, it will automatically force viewers to make a copy of the file and add it to their own Google Drive so they can edit it. This is a great option when you want to share a resource. Even if you state that viewers should make their own copy, without fail, you will get multiple emails requesting edit access to your resource. Creating this link is actually really simple and takes less than five seconds. Begin by clicking on share and select anyone with a link can view. Then in the URL, highlight the word edit and anything that comes after it. Replace that section with the word copy 
And there you have it. Your force copy link is ready to share. Now, as wonderful as this feature is, it can sometimes be frustrating to be on the receiving end of it. There are times when I would really like to look at a resource before I make a copy of it to my drive. Well, here's a hack to get around this. Head up to the URL, delete the word copy, and change it to view. Once you finish looking at the file, you can make a copy by clicking on File, Make a Copy. Let's talk offline access next. Google Drive offline access allows you to open and edit your docs without an internet connection. The best part is the next time you log on to the internet, all your offline changes will automatically be synced. Here's a little bit of irony for you. To enable offline access, you must first be connected to the internet. You also have to be using Google Chrome or Microsoft Edge as your browser. To enable offline access for the first time, begin by going to drive.google.com and selecting settings under the gear icon. Look for the offline option and make sure it's active. By default, this will only make your most recent docs, slides, and sheets available offline. To make a specific document available offline from your drive, right-click on the file and toggle on Available Offline. If you're already viewing the document, click the File menu, then select Make Available Offline. Next up is the Activity Dashboard. This feature allows you to see who has viewed and or shared your doc, email collaborators, and keep track of viewer and comment trends. You can access this dashboard by clicking on the last option in the Tools menu or by clicking on the jagged arrow in the upper right of your document. Couple of quick notes to help you better understand what you're looking at. This dashboard only reports activity from people in your organization or specific individuals the file has been shared with. Additionally, only file editors are able to use the activity dashboard. One feature I really like about this dashboard is the ability to email collaborators from this location. Simply click the checkbox to select recipients or use the drop down arrow next to the mail icon to select multiple names at once. For example, I could email everyone who hasn't viewed my document yet. Click continue and draft your message. I really like this feature because not only does it automatically attach the file to the email, but it also keeps you in the same workspace, preventing potential distraction by all those other emails in your inbox. Before we move on, I wanna highlight privacy settings. These settings allow you to limit who can see your view history. The first option turns off view history for all files. This means that no one's going to be able to see whether you have viewed documents or not. The second option turns off view history for the specific file you're in. For example, if I didn't want somebody to know whether I had looked at this document or not, I would simply toggle off this setting. The last feature for part one of this video is notification settings. This can be found under the tools menu. This feature allows you to control whether you'd like to receive emails about comment activity and or edits made to your doc. By default, you'll be notified about all comments and none of the edits. Next up are collaboration features. These features are amazing when it comes to facilitating group work and increasing student engagement. For example, during group projects, students can not only work in the same doc in real time, but they can see each other's edits. They can also review and provide feedback on each other's work through comments and or suggestion mode. There are five collaborative features that I'd like to highlight in this video, so let's dive in. Suggestion mode in Google Docs is a really helpful feature for peer revision because it allows you to suggest changes without altering the original text. For example, when I make a suggestion, the document owner has the option to either accept or reject it. If you accept the suggestion, it'll automatically make the change for you. If you're a commenter on a document, you will automatically be placed in suggestion mode. As a file editor, you can manually enter suggestion mode by clicking on the editing drop-down menu and select suggesting. 
Another useful feature for providing feedback are comments. In addition to comments, in mid-2022, Google added the ability to leave emoji reactions, which is a great way to express your opinions in a less formal manner. To leave a comment, begin by highlighting the text you want to leave feedback about, then choose one of the following options. You can right-click or use the Insert menu to add comments or emoji reactions. Additional options for adding comments are the icon in the toolbar, the Add button in the Comment dashboard, or the shortcut Control-Alt-M. If you're viewing the document as a commenter or suggester, you'll also see a quick add option for comments and emoji reactions on the right-hand side of the document. One underutilized feature in comments is the ability to direct or assign comments to specific people by using the at sign or plus symbol followed by their email address. This will send them an email notification about the conversation. You can also turn the comment into an action item by checking the assign box. This lets that person know that they're responsible for completing that task. Finally, let's talk about the comment dashboard. This dashboard allows you to see the history of comments and filter them as needed. This can be particularly helpful if you left feedback for a student and want to review it later, or you're working on a document with multiple colleagues and want to view only the comments that mention or are assigned to you. Next up is file version history. This tool was a lifesaver when I was in the classroom. To access version history, you can click on the link, which lets you know when the last edit was made, or under File, Version History, See Version History. This tool allows you to see changes that have been made to a document, including who made them. This is particularly useful for determining each student's contribution to a group project. You can also restore earlier versions of a file, which could be helpful if you delete something by mistake and later realize you need it. Finally, you can also name earlier versions, creating a record of the document's history without having to create a new Google Doc each time. For example, when I have my weekly meeting with my boss, instead of creating a new Google Doc each week, I simply name the agenda so I have a historical record then I type over the old content. So I actually have a meeting with her today. So this one would be J Agenda 12423. I can easily filter to see all of my previous agendas by clicking the drop down arrow and selecting named versions. Since we're talking about collaboration, I'd be remiss if I didn't spend at least a minute talking about the Docs Google Meet integration. You can now start or join a Google Meet without ever having to leave your Google Doc. Simply click on the Meet icon in the upper right corner to get started. The Meet will show the Meet will open in a sidebar on the right of my screen. I can then share the link to my meeting or I can provide a link to the video call and the doc simultaneously. I really like this new addition because it allows you to stay in your current workspace instead of bouncing back and forth between separate tabs and trying to split screens and all of that nonsense. The last feature I want to highlight is yet another way Google is trying to promote productivity and the ability to stay in one place when you work. And that feature is the ability to email all document collaborators straight from Google Docs. You have the option to email the file, email collaborators, or create an email draft directly in the Google Doc. This is an example of a building block, which we'll be talking about in one of our later videos. Thanks for joining the Educate community today. I hope the skills that you learned will help inspire you to begin using Google Docs to collaborate, whether it's in the workplace or in the classroom. If you're interested in more tips and tutorials on all things EdTech, be sure to check out our channel. Also, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe so you'll be notified each time we post new content. See you next time.